All right, I'm gonna be honest here. I haven't used Google as much as Amazon in my smart home, mainly because Amazon has had more automation options. But with the new Pixel 6, I wanted to give Google another chance, especially with the new features to see if it can improve my smart home or is it just a lost cause? Well, one of the advantages of having an Android phone is the tight integration between the phone and the Google Smart Home. I don't need a smart speaker in every room, which is convenient. I could just set the phone down on my desk and have a smart display right there, right? Unfortunately, there's a problem. The assistant asked me to unlock my phone for anything beyond asking about the weather. Got it, but first you'll have to unlock your device. Turn on the office fan? Nope. What's on my calendar for today? Yeah. Forget about it. I troubleshooted everything I could find online and nothing seemed to fix it. Apparently, it's been a reoccurring problem for years. It's too bad because once the phone is unlocked, the assistant is very helpful. If I change the lights with my voice, a slider comes up so I can quickly adjust it even more. And I really like this design. Using an Android phone is still convenient though, because you can just swipe down and control devices and groups that are in Google Home, similar to HomeKit on an iPhone. It does take a second to load, but to me this is faster than unlocking my phone and asking the assistant to control my lights with my voice. When it comes to phone calls, Google has a few tricks up its sleeve. With the new Pixel 6, if your phone is ringing, you can just say answer and the phone will answer the call and automatically put it on speakerphone. You don't have to say the trigger or wake word for this to work, so that's pretty sweet and it does not use voice match, so anyone that says the word answer could answer your phone. But it won't work if it's in a sentence, like if someone's saying, are you gonna answer that? So that's good to see. Google Pixel phones can still have the assistant answer and screen calls, which is extremely useful with all the robocalls out there. I think it's funny that I have a robot on my phone answering other robot calls. It's like such a strange time we live in. One thing I was curious to try was calling from a Nest Hub to my phone and using the answer feature in the new Pixel phones. Turns out this only works on actual phone calls and not Google Duo calls. Lame. So basically my idea of using the Pixel phone as a smart display isn't working out like I hoped. So what about automations? Well, don't worry, it's not all doom and gloom, but it's not great either. So let's start off first with the things I like. Bedtime and morning routines are pretty useful. When I'm getting ready for bed, I can tell the assistant goodnight. It will tell me my first event on the calendar the next morning. Then it will ask me what time I want to set the alarm for. What time should I set the alarm for? That way I can set it based on what's on my calendar the next day, which makes sense. Then if my phone is below a certain battery level, it will remind me to charge Heads it. Heads up, here's a reminder to charge your Pixel 6 Pro. Your battery is at 55%. Then it turns down the volume and plays some sleep sounds which are relaxing. What's really cool is that the morning routine starts when I stop the alarm on the display next to my bed. People always ask me about a morning routine that adjusts for different schedules and this is a great and easy solution. It tells me the weather, calendar, and instead of reading me the news, it does something better. It can read me articles on specific topics I choose, which are usually less depressing than the news. Shout out to Brian from the channel Automate Your Life where I got this idea from. Another interesting thing you can do with Google is day long routines. You can only activate this when you first create a routine because it's much different than the others. The way it works is if you have a consistent schedule when things should happen, you can add actions throughout the day. Then you can see it all from one view as opposed to multiple schedule routines scattered around. I really like this because the more I can consolidate my routines, the better. The last thing I like is home and away routines. I can set the camera on my Nest Hub Max to turn on when everyone is away from the house and turn off the camera when someone comes home. With Amazon, you can only set up a routine based on the location of one device. So you cannot say when everyone is gone or if just one person is home. Google routines do have the advantage here. All right, so what do I not like about Google's automations? With a Pixel 6, I can stop an alarm by just saying stop, and that's great. The problem is that I cannot trigger a routine when the alarm is stopped on my phone. It can only happen if the alarm is stopped on a smart display or speaker. So another big missed opportunity for the Pixel 6. Another is the delay available in routines. 
I'm glad to see Google added this, but the minimum time is one minute. Amazon can go down to five seconds, but seriously, just let me type in how many seconds for a delay. What's the big deal? There are a couple of actions in the routines to put your phone on do not disturb or turn off the ringer. I thought it could be great to schedule a routine to mute my phone every morning if there was a reoccurring work meeting or something, or put my phone on do not disturb mode for a movie. Here's the issue, if I schedule a routine or if I start it from a smart speaker, it won't change my phone. I have to start the routine from my phone, which kind of defeats the purpose. I mean, if I have to unlock my phone and say the voice command, I might as well just change it on my phone right there. Of course, you still cannot start routines based on other devices like sensors. Google says it's coming soon, but they've been saying that for years, so... Dad, when can I get a smartphone? Hmm, how about when Google routines can be triggered by a sensor? I'll be an old grandma by then. <laughs> exactly. There's another way to trigger Google routines, which is very convenient. On Android, you can save the routine as a widget button to go on the home screen. This is actually really useful for those routines I run often. So even though Google routines cannot be triggered by as many options as an Amazon routine, there are still some unique things you can do, especially if you have an Android phone. Now let's talk about smart speakers and displays, because Google does a pretty good job with these. Google generally doesn't update their smart home hardware as often as Amazon does, and that might seem like a bad thing, but in my opinion, it's actually a good thing. Let me explain. The Nest Hub Max came out years ago and is still fast and amazing. Amazon has released many smart displays, but most of them are slow and will probably need to be upgraded. So I think Google has a better approach. Also, no matter what I do, Amazon seems to find a way to sneak in some kind of ad or self-promotion on my Echo Show. It makes me so angry, but I've never had this problem with Google Nest Hub displays. There have been some great updates to the Google displays so you can quickly access apps. They have always been really intuitive to use and are just a much better experience compared with Amazon's. Now, it's not all perfect for Google. If I'm talking to the assistant on my phone and the speaker across the room hears me, it will respond from the speaker. I hate this, and Amazon does a much better job knowing which speaker I'm speaking to. When it comes to TVs, there's a new convenient feature. With the latest Android update, you can have a remote for the Google TV. I tried it out on the latest Chromecast and it seemed to work okay. There was an occasional delay, but overall it's usable. The thing that I like the most is that I can turn the TV on and off with a built-in remote on my phone. Even though Google Nest displays are not perfect, they're much better than Amazon displays. So much so that after using them more lately, I might only use Google displays going forward. Overall, I've enjoyed using an Android phone again, especially some of the shortcuts to quickly interact with my smart home. The Pixel 6 Pro is an excellent smartphone. I love being able to erase objects and pictures, and the screen looks amazing with a fast refresh rate. Also, accepting or declining phone calls with only saying one word is really convenient. I'm a little disappointed that I couldn't use more of those new Pixel features like answering a video call with just saying the word answer. The good thing is that any Android phone will work well with your Google Smart Home. To me, the Pixel 5a is the best value for what you get. I might use it over the Pixel 6 Pro because of the smaller, lighter form factor. So do I think the Google Smart Home is a lost cause? No, not yet. If I want to trigger automations based on other devices like a motion sensor, then I can just use SmartThings or Home Assistant. Yes, it's convenient that Amazon routines can do that, but they have enough limitations that it's better to run the majority of automations with SmartThings or Home Assistant anyways. I just wish Google would enable or fix some of the issues I mentioned in the video, like being able to use the Assistant from the phone's lock screen. That would really change how I interact with my smart home. But let me know what you guys think, if you're using Google or not. Thanks for watching. The other thing I have and you don't is all my wake words. I can respond to many other wake words. Anything that sounds like hey in my name. Hey Goober. Yes, can I help you? Hey I want to turn. Hey Gugu. Hi, what can I do for you? Please stop waking me up with such atrocities. Wow, I cannot believe this. Hey Poodle. Hello, what do you want me to do? Woof woof. Haha, ha, this is insane. Okay, if it responds to this, I am going to lose it. Hey Poo Poo. 
Yes, I heard my name. Why do you keep laughing? Oh, wow. Get out of here. Very funny, guys. Go back to using your Amazon Fire Phones from 2014. Okay, Boomer. Hi, may I help you? Haha, ha, you found another one. How many can we find?